Good evening. Good evening and welcome very, very much to this segment of Conversations where I'm pleased and honored to welcome to the program Mr. Harold Janine. And Mr. Janine, of course, was the long-term president, chairman, and finding, uh, founding force behind the phenomenal growth of International Telephone and Telegraph Corporation, had a long and distinguished career prior to that, and has a continuing interest in the operation of the American world business and sociological order. And Mr. Janine, welcome very, very much to Conversations. Thank you very much, Harold. I wonder if you might share with us, uh, maybe I could ask you at the outset, the book is an incredibly interesting one. I congratulate you and uh, Mr. Roscoe on the book. Do you have a good time writing the book? Yeah, was I had a, a lot of fun now to write, and of course it takes you back through a lot of things you did, and uh, when you think about them, mm -hmm. you, you realize you did them from desperation at the time, but there was probably more logic in them than you realized. Uh-huh, right, uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, just moving moving from uh, some challenge to challenge. And you've always set very high challenges for yourself in order to be able to move beyond the kind of course of mediocrity that would allow you to continue in life, but to try and set those very high standards has been a, a mark of your career and one that you subscribe to and would recommend to others. If, That's you know, true, mm -hmm. and uh, Harold, I can see you've mm -hmm. read the book. Yeah, I have very well, <laughs> yes, indeed. It was very no, I, I think, you know, people think of you as being tough or mm -hmm. whatever. I don't think we were ever tough. You mm -hmm. you put it very well. We set high standards, mm -hmm. and we tried to stay with them. Mm -hmm. And that meant if you couldn't make them easily, you mm -hmm. tried a little harder. You helped everybody make them, mm -hmm. but you didn't relax those standards. Yeah. So yeah. that's the difference between being tough, by the way, and being demanding. You're demanding for everybody, not yeah. just for yourself. Yeah, it might be the difference between the quality of leadership uh, that you also talk about in the book, that the leader is one who will be able to do that without having to necessarily crack the whoop, you can set an example that others can follow. Uh, that's Hal, that's a very mm -hmm. uh, serious point in my mm -hmm. mind, mm -hmm. and a very important point in the book, really. Mm -hmm. You don't accomplish things by directing and scaring mm -hmm. people. You work with them. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. I had a very, mm -hmm. very simple kind of explanation of my feeling about it. You sort of get in the boat and grab an oar. You yeah. don't just yeah, yeah. yell at them. But uh, the truth of the matter is, if you'll reach out to help people do their job and they have a feeling of confidence that you're going to have some loyalty both ways mm -hmm. and you support them because you're a part of their problem too. Yes. Uh, yeah. It's partly yeah. your mistake as well as theirs and if you have to get out of one, it's partly your problem to get out as well as theirs. They, if you share that with them, mm -hmm. believe me, that's leadership because mm -hmm. then they're all with you and they'll take... They'll stretch. And they'll mm -hmm. try to do things that mm -hmm. they won't otherwise do. And they'll be able to stretch and do those things in terms of their own sense of participation in that rather than as some quarry slave, or something you're, which you're, too many people seem to see people in terms of it. Yeah, you're mm -hmm. absolutely right. Mm -hmm. Not mm -hmm. only that, they'll mm -hmm. surprise themselves as well as you as what they will reach out and be able to do. Mm -hmm. And that's when the pride and the momentum and the mm -hmm. sort of challenge begins to make reality to them. Yeah, you've made you've made the business of managing and the question of management in your book, Management, of course, a, a, a matter of great concern. But it would be a lesson for living in many aspects of life, whether it be in questions of business management, the arts, science, or whatever field of endeavor. It's good general advice in terms of a way of living a life, do you think, if you understand? Yeah, I, I, uh, you know, I was concentrating on the management yes, end of, of it, Harold, but, yes. uh, but there is truth in that. Let me describe for a second for you what I, I sense is a very important relationship which takes place largely, I'm thinking of companies where you have groups of people. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, everybody in that company, you know, has careers and ambitions and things they want to do. Yeah. And as part of that, they're calling and doing the things you want them to do. Mm -hmm. So in a sense, they're expecting you to help them, and you're expecting them to do the job which helps you and helps your overall purpose. Right. But, you know, to do that kind of a job, you've got to reach out and help them, and they got to know that you're going to share that with them. Mm -hmm. Now, that's the spirit. Share, now, share the challenge. Share the challenge. Yeah. Share the mistakes. All right. All Importantly, right. share the mistakes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But let me okay. move one step beyond that. That's not quite enough. Mm -hmm. So you can have that feeling. They can have that feeling. You're mm -hmm. a straight shooter, and, yeah. they, and they like to work for you and all that. Yeah. But you still got to give them those careers. Mm -hmm. Now, in order to give them those careers, mm -hmm. you got to have a winning answer. All right. If yeah. you don't have a winning answer, there's nothing to share. There's nothing for their careers. So the leadership yeah. in that respect is sort of solely yours. Uh -huh. You've got to make a lot of decisions mm -hmm. about where you go. You've got mm -hmm. to put out the goal there, the standards yeah. as we put them, right. and they'll go for them. Uh -huh. But if you don't do it intelligently, it uh -huh. isn't going to work that well. So yeah. they have a right to demand of you a, a sense of leadership in the uh -huh. real classical sense of uh -huh. where do we go uh -huh. 
and it has to be successful yeah. or you don't have an answer. Now, I just want to add one other thing. Yes, yeah. Being successful is not that hard, and I'll uh-huh. explain that. Oh, well, that's good to know that being successful is not that hard, <laughs> but it is good to be able to set those challenges that they then would be able to realize their full potential in terms of meeting those challenges. That's what you owe them. They they have, put it simpler, they have a right to demand of you Mm -hmm. a future. That's the general quality of leadership. You're darn right. right. You think that, uh, you said that the question of is successful is easy and so forth, but... All right, let me show you how that works. It it all fits together, you see. That's the the whole thesis of what we were trying to say. Mm -hmm. How do you run a successful company? Mm -hmm. I'll give you a platitude, but Mm -hmm. I'll go on from there. Mm -hmm. You make more good decisions than bad decisions. Now, mm-hmm. you could say, mm-hmm. okay, well, in the baseball, you know, you get 300 is a good batting average. Yeah, that's good, yeah. Management, mm-hmm. maybe 85%. Mm-hmm. And the ability to change bad ones quick. Mm-hmm. Now, how do, you, how do you do that? You have to have good facts. Mm-hmm. Now, mm-hmm. now you get facts. in. Yeah, facts. Mm-hmm. Now, that's highly important, mm-hmm. and you find mm-hmm. that. I've said yes. that, but everybody talks about facts. Mm-hmm. Uh, like everything else, it's mm-hmm. more sinned against than mm-hmm. actually followed. Yeah. But let me follow what we did in our case, which is a little unique, mm-hmm. and I don't think it's been uh, really used by many people. Mm-hmm. I'd say 490 of the Fortune 500 companies, if not the whole 500, mm-hmm. operate on a kind of a classical theory. And mm-hmm. let me describe that, then I'll get back to the please, whole please, issue of the facts. I, I don't want to talk mm-hmm. too long now. You've no, cut that's me quite, down. no, it's perfect. Fine. All right. Yeah, no. But you, way down the bar- bottom of any company... Yes you have what we call the divisions. Mm -hmm. Now, the divisions are the places where you make your money, where you have your problems, where Mm -hmm. you meet the competition, Mm -hmm. where you're face-to-face with reality in the world. Yeah, right. Now, if you have a company that has one division, Mm -hmm. that's probably a proprietorship or something, Mm -hmm. but the guy that's Mm -hmm. running it, Mm -hmm. he knows everything happening on that front line. Mm -hmm. He he knows the customers, he knows the problems, he knows what the competition is doing and so on. Uh But now, let's let's change... An entrepreneur, maybe. Yes, exactly, exactly. All right, right. and he's Mm -hmm. right there mm-hmm. and he makes the decisions and everybody knows why and mm-hmm. they're all familiar mm-hmm. but now let's change that a little bit mm-hmm. now we got a company with 10 of these divisions right. and they're way down here now you have the classical daisy chain that all these corporations have mm-hmm. we have a group executive mm-hmm. and a super group executive mm-hmm. and an executive vp and an office of the president mm-hmm. and everything else that goes with it and lots of administrative oh assistance. yeah all kinds <laughs> of things and so these mm-hmm. things go filtering up there mm-hmm. and everybody's yeah. got something to protect it's yeah. their turf mm-hmm. And by the time he gets up to the top guy, which takes an inordinate amount of time, yeah. he gets a kind of condensed, filtered, well, maybe biased version of what is happening. Then he has to make a decision, perhaps without all the facts he'd like to have in yeah. front of him, uh-huh. and it's got to filter down. I hope it meets whatever they thought the facts were when it gets down there. And that's the way you run an ordinary company. Yeah, but that can be some problems. Oh, mm-hmm. listen, I'm mm-hmm. going to come around. The yes, real sir. problem is what mm-hmm. happens to the momentum and the vitality of the company. Right. Mm-hmm. Now, I want to reverse this and tell you what we did. And that's yes, what we were talking about mm-hmm. in the book there. Every one of our, by the way, we mm-hmm. didn't have 10 divisions. Mm-hmm. We had 250 divisions. <laughs> At ITT, yes. That's, that's right. right. Yeah, and every it. one of these mm-hmm. fellows wrote their own report, mm-hmm. personally signed it, mm-hmm. and sent it up directly to me. Now, mm-hmm. the important thing mm-hmm. wasn't that they sent it to me. Mm-hmm. The important thing was nobody could tamper with it. Nobody had a chance to filter it, change mm-hmm. it, or do anything with it. it no editing up, process. No right. editing right. process right. at all. Right. It came up just mm-hmm. exactly as they wrote it. Yeah. Whatever they wanted to say, and they covered all the things we wanted mm-hmm. them to cover. Mm-hmm. Now, in addition to that, we had a lot of staff people who were experts in engineering, mm-hmm. marketing, manufacturing, industrial engineering, all the things you'd need to mm-hmm. know. And they had the right to go in any of these divisions, look at anything, and offer their comments and make a report. Yeah. But they had to go over it with the guy in charge of that particular bailiwick before they took it any further. I see. So that that way there was mm-hmm. no secrecy, it was mm-hmm. right out in the open, mm-hmm. plus the fact he might have something to say that would change their view. Or mm-hmm. he may say, you're right, and I'll go do it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Those things happened too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Then we invented a guy that you know nobody's ever heard of in industry before. Mm-hmm. We call them a product line manager, and when we hired them, they were all very competent people, yeah. top-notch people. I had to explain to them what their job was because mm-hmm. I couldn't explain it myself. Could you explain it to me? Maybe. Well, maybe. Mm-hmm. But, but I'd say, look, you've got no authority at yeah. all. None authority. Right. No authority. Right. You can go right. in any division, but yeah. you've got no authority. Right. Mm-hmm. But you're in charge of the competition. Mm-hmm. And he said, what do you mean I'm in charge of the competition? 
-hmm. I want you to look at this company, that division, or whatever one you're working on, as objectively as you can, with all the knowledge that you know is going on in the field with our competitors, yeah. and what they're coming into the field with, what you see happening, mm -hmm. and see if we're measuring up and whether we can meet that. It couldn't be done with like an outside consultant or something like that? It could, little, but this, uh, let's call yeah. this guy an inside consultant. Inside consultant. But right. like a consultant, he mm -hmm. had one distinct difference between mm -hmm. the guy who was running it. Mm -hmm. You know, if you were running a division, mm -hmm and you just hired 40 more salesmen and mm -hmm. you made a big speech mm -hmm. and you put out a budget that was 40% mm -hmm. higher and put a wing on the plan mm -hmm. and the sales didn't come through, mm -hmm. you're the last guy that wants to admit it. Right, right. So you It's pretty come. hard mm -hmm. and, and you know let me say, yeah, you're going to sure. keep saying next month, mm -hmm. next month, but mm -hmm. it doesn't come through mm -hmm. next month. Mm -hmm. This guy didn't have that responsibility. Mm -hmm. So yeah, he right. could be a little more objective. Yeah. Now yeah. wait a minute, he's only one more input. Mm -hmm. Don't forget we had the guy's own report, right. we had the staff people, we had this, then we finally had the accounting people. Mm -hmm. I have an Old account. Yeah. They think they yes, could sir. run everything, of mm -hmm. course. The controller. So, <laughs> that's right. Yeah. And they all report directly to the controller. Mm -hmm. And we wanted them free because yeah. they're the uh, scorekeepers. That's all it is. And then we had all that in. Now yeah. you'd say, with well, all this material, all this stuff, and see, there was two books. I, I was going to say, you need big stuff. Yeah, you'd say, what on earth three. would you do with it? Yeah. Now yeah. you get to the key. Yes. Once a month, for a whole week, mm -hmm. we used to get them all. Uh -huh. The top management. The guys in between, the staff, the line people, the group executives, the super group executives, we got them all in a room that was about a block long and a From half a block wide. 250 centers? 100, no, we'd, we'd get uh, the group executives, the subgroup executives, and some of the line people I periodically see. on a rotating basis. Right, but, right. But they all got the feel of it, right, I'll right. tell you. Mm -hmm. We get them all in there. We'd have about 150 that's people. Yes, yeah, right. 150 yeah. people. In fact, the room was so big, a big oval table. We yeah. had what? All, everybody had a microphone, so yeah. they all had a voice. Right, right. But there was fire lanes that they made us put through the table. Right. So that just thing just was so big. <laughs> <laughs> but what, but you had to beat a pace to retreat. Well, what, yeah. what I'm getting at yeah. is, yes, sir. we spent a solid week, from 10 in the morning till 10 or later at night, throwing all the stuff on the table. Mm -hmm. All these ideas, mm -hmm. uh, people's opinions of what was happening, what wasn't happening, what should be done, mm -hmm. and we thrashed them out among ourselves right there. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. let me tell you what was happening, mm -hmm. as, mm -hmm. I, as I see it. Mm -hmm. First of all, you were bringing the whole management of the company from way up at those, remember those levels I mm -hmm. described yeah, and all yeah, the daisy yeah, chains? Yeah. You brought them right down there to the front lines with the line guys that had the problems. All right, yeah. And you made the decisions, mm -hmm. and you and you worked out your answers, and if they were wrong, they told you. They were a very open a a atmosphere. Mm -hmm. They could correct me. They could correct them. All we wanted was the best facts. Mm -hmm. So we got much better facts that way, yeah. finally. Uh -huh. In that give and take? And in, in that, that give and take. Yeah. Uh -huh. And on, t on top of that, uh, I think if I try to make a mistake, they'd tell you. Mm -hmm. They were proud to tell you, and we wanted them to. That was the way we worked. So it was important to have open communication. Oh, very open and, and, and facts. Facts, could be no politics, alibis, and best facts, we could so. do. Mm -hmm. Everything mm -hmm. ran on merit. Yeah. And uh, let me say, in yeah. fairness, I've worked my way up through through life. From you <laughs> did indeed. Yes, yes from yes. way back. And I had this feeling about yeah. people's careers. Uh -huh. It should be on merit. And uh -huh. I'll tell you, I don't know, but many people I have at times, uh -huh. you find yourself in some kind of a job, and there's some fellow that isn't doing the job up above you, and you report to him. Uh -huh. You know uh -huh. what your reaction is? Uh -huh. Look, you SOB, uh -huh. either do the job or get out of it. I uh -huh. don't want your job, uh -huh. but as long as you're in there not Forget doing it, yeah. you're hurting my career. <laughs> yeah, and right. that's what we didn't want. So mm -hmm. that was the kind of spirit we had. So yeah, now, well, yeah. now I want to tell you what happened yeah. out of that. That's path by, to by success, the way, yes. just, just in passing, I yeah. want to show you what, what facts are as a problem. You know, if you had a street corner accident, a couple of fenders got bent, and there are eight guys standing on the corner, you asked each one, story. Yeah, that's right. Absolutely. Right. And that's yeah. a very simple problem, right? Mm -hmm. Sure. Now, what yeah. do you think happens if you have ten divisions, mm -hmm. and they're dealing with the interest rate, mm -hmm. the competition, mm -hmm. the weather, mm -hmm. what, mm -hmm. uh, who knows what? Right. Mm -hmm. And they're trying to tell you what their problem is. Can you imagine how hard it is to get the real facts of the problem? It must be difficult, too, also to avoid, what, like politics and internal oh, politics of the we, company and that kind of thing? To I'll tell you how you avoid yeah. that. You make it very clear that yeah. you'll fire a guy that involves politics in his things. And uh -huh, you do it uh -huh. if you have to, and you don't even yeah. hesitate. You mean by that internal politics? That's that exactly kind of, right, because yeah, that yeah. just, that mm -hmm. just uh, stops everything, like uh, freezes it. So it's really a call for integrity, oh, which yeah, is absolutely. part of the market But that has to come from the leadership. Yeah, right. right. Again, it has to come from the yeah. leadership. Right. Okay, but yeah, yeah, remember, right. remember what I said, mm -hmm. 10 divisions, now mm -hmm. make 250. I know. And they're all trying to tell you what the facts are, mm -hmm. mean to. Mm -hmm. Out mm -hmm. of all this cross-checking, mm -hmm. you got a much better answer to the facts 
than you could ever get any other way. You have an awful lot of information. Well, but mm -hmm. you, you beat yeah. it down in those meetings. Right. And okay. you remember, what, everything I say, excuse me, yeah, I cool. say we compete on relative inefficiencies. Yeah. Now, how inefficient is that? You're touching yeah. on it. But how much more inefficient is it to go up through this daisy chain where everybody tries to analyze it and break down? And you never know whether you're answering the guy's question that's out on that front line. Mm -hmm. Yeah. L let me give you the description. I, I, I wonder if I could ask you that, if I could. If I yeah. could. How efficient is it? Are we, do we have some problems in terms of the structure of business management? And is there some well, flabbiness and some problems well, in let, terms let of Let me put it this oh, way. Well, uh, uh, the better way to put it is we did... 58 quarters in a row where we went 10% or more ahead of last year. In mm -hmm. other words, compounding on earnings per share, mm -hmm. not total earnings. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's 14 and a half years. And you set that as a record. I mean, you set that yeah. as a goal. Uh, yeah. Right? Then we hit 74 mm -hmm. when we had the big the oil, oil crisis, mm -hmm. as you remember, in foreign exchange. Mm -hmm. We went from about $4.30 in share in earnings, having started at 89 cents mm -hmm. for the split shares. Mm -hmm to about, I think it was about 380 but by 1977 when I stepped down, we were back up to $4. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Now, that that's what we did so with that method. But let me tell you what... It was an unprecedented growth rate. Yeah, but that, that, that's... Over a long period yeah, of time. Yeah, but that's earnings per share. You gotta, right. no, uh, let me ask you, uh, yeah. tell you what the hurdles were we had to do while we did this. Uh -huh. You know, we started overseas with 85% of our earnings in South America and mm -hmm. Europe and everywhere yeah, else. Yeah, we could say that, if you don't mind, for the audience. it t was an, a telephone, telegraph company. That's Maybe right. Maybe talk a little of the, oh, yeah, how it was in uh, what, we, what we had yeah. was we, mm -hmm. we had a lot of telephone companies mm -hmm. in South America, and as everybody knows, the telephone company was never even popular in the United States, mm -hmm. much less so in the political South American areas. Mm -hmm. And we were periodically, uh, they took over our companies, and then we had to argue to get paid if we were yeah, going to get paid yeah, at yeah, all. That's a problem. And yeah, then we had yeah. a lot of a lot of earnings over in Europe where mm -hmm. we were operating, but they were considered sort of overseas earnings, and mm -hmm. but 95% of our stockholders were here in the good old U.S. But when you took over, the great deal of the earnings was, were they, they were 85%, foreign earnings? 85% were always, was foreign. 85%, roughly speaking, overseas, 95% mm -hmm. of our stockholders here. Mm -hmm. And I had a kind of a concept, which may not have been a good one, mm -hmm. but I always thought of, the, the, the let's say, the trust officer in Wichita, Kansas. Mm -hmm. I don't know why Wichita, but that sounded to me about as central as you can yeah, get in right, America. Yeah, okay. right, yeah. And I could just see him looking at our statement and saying, but gee, 85% of these earnings are foreign. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I just didn't feel he was going to feel comfortable buying our stock as long as that was true. And that's honestly my reaction, mm -hmm. see? So we set it early as an objective that we mm -hmm. wanted to earn at least half our ca profits over here. We wanted to develop the and we wanted to have enough cash here that we could pay all the dividends from here if we had to. Mm -hmm. Now, I wasn't worried that we'd have to, but don't forget back through the 30s mm -hmm. and... Uh, the before and yeah. after the war, there were times when you couldn't freely bring money from overseas right. where yeah. our earnings were. So it was, a, again, a kind of a quality factor that you were seeking. Yeah, so and so then we made that decision, and the only way we could do it was to grow in the U.S. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we had very little in the U.S. We had more vice presidents in the mm -hmm. U.S. than anywhere mm -hmm. in the world, mm -hmm. yeah. but we didn't have that kind of money or activity here. And but you didn't see your potential for growing in the telephone industry as uh, there were no, other you, you, you couldn't. Yeah, well, all right. AT&T AT owned 90% of mm -hmm. the telephones, mm -hmm. and uh, telephone, General Tel owned General, almost yeah. 10, and there was mm -hmm. just a few left, and it was pretty mm -hmm. tough competition yeah. well, all right. well, in, our, in our own basic field. Now, mm -hmm. overseas, we probably... In the rest of the world, we were probably 30, 35 percent of the whole industry, uh -huh, uh -huh. and that's where our, our business was. Yeah, yeah. That, that international character might fit a little nice, more nicely now as we become more and more internationalized, the world economy. In it's becoming more and more an international economic order. So, I mean, you were right in you know, keeping with the direction that the economy in large macro terms was trending, but in any event, yeah. Well, how you wanted to develop what we did is uh, kind of reversed it. We mm -hmm. became international by coming back right. to the U.S. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I see, right. <laughs> the opposite of what most of these people have done. And then you wanted to yeah. develop other possibilities so, in the domestic market. So then our problem was, how do we balance uh, this by growing in the U.S.? And in the meantime, mm -hmm. using just these methods that I've been speaking of, with those fact-gathering approaches and everything, mm -hmm. we had an integrated company in, the, in Europe mm -hmm. with, a, gee, I think we had 110,000, 120,000 people when I started over there. Mm -hmm. No headquarters, no nothing, mm -hmm. all just uh, so forth. We mm -hmm. gradually pulled this together. But what I wanted to say is we took the European company mm -hmm from about 300 million in sales to about 8 billion. Oh. And we didn't acquire very much over there. This was all in done by internal yeah. growth, uh -huh. mostly done by internal growth, uh -huh. using just this method I'm speaking of. Uh -huh. So over here, uh -huh. 
we we had to acquire not only to balance what we had, but to keep pace with that growth. Uh-huh. And now, that, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. I was going to say, mm-hmm. and, and, and this is what I wanted to come back to, you mm-hmm. see. Mm-hmm. First of all, from a quality or, or an approach standpoint, the Justice Department in those days at least wouldn't let us buy two of anything. Uh-huh. So we bought one of everything. Yeah. Okay. And, and I've got to get back to this group and that, those meetings. Uh-huh. We got to the point of having enough confidence in what we were doing because it was working mm-hmm. that we felt we could buy almost anything and run it well, uh-huh. and that's exactly what we did. Do. You, you had so much confidence in the management process it, it, that you developed that, it was that you working, could run anything, right? It, and, and it did, and it will, and I will tell you that anybody who wants to do it can do the same thing. There's no genius involved at all. It's just, but there's one problem. Do we have a theory for this? Do we have a theory name for this one? We have theory X and theory Y, or do we have a theory uh, G? Yeah. Uh, I think oh. this is theory reality. All right, well. right, right, right. <laughs> it so, does work. Yes, That's what, right, I, right. what I really yeah. want, want yeah, to say I mean, on that. Uh huh. So uh, that was the way we ran it. But now I want to point out something as a matter of quantitative measurement. If yeah. you think of spending one week a month mm-hmm. in this meeting from 10 in the morning to 10 at night, mm-hmm. going over our problems and mm-hmm. beating them down, getting decisions, changing the bad ones, and so on. And hanging in there till you get the answer. That's mm-hmm. exactly right. Mm-hmm. Now, Add to that mm-hmm. that we flew over the following week mm-hmm. and went to Europe and did the same thing with a group just as big, only we worked later at night because we had to get back by the weekend. Mm-hmm. And so we put in another week. Yeah. Now, right. yep, mm-hmm. so that's two Proper weeks a life. month, yeah. two mm-hmm. weeks a mm-hmm. month. Mm-hmm. And if you add that up, that's six months a year mm-hmm. that we mm-hmm. sat in those meetings. And in 18 years, we probably, I never thought about it this yeah. way, yeah. we yeah. probably spent nine whole years of long days sitting in meetings, beating at our problems with the whole company in there. And that was getting at the idea of what you were going to do. Getting at the facts. Right. Getting After at the you facts, had the right. facts, you knew what to then do. Then once you got that in place, <laughs> then you just go out and do it. Do the acquisition. And do whatever I know it sounds easy, but no, 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 it's no, like... But you remember I said you had to make more good decisions than bad decisions yeah, right. relative to other people. Yeah, you might right. have been inefficient, but they're not as good. Uh-huh. That's how we did that. Yeah. And if I go back, which I kind of measured our progress from when I started in 59, uh-huh. uh, what we used to keep track of was the compound rate of growth. Mm-hmm of our earnings per share Mm -hmm. against all the other companies on the stock exchange. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, in those days, we didn't have inflation. Mm -hmm. Uh, The stock market was basically flat from 63 on. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And very, it was only a handful of companies that were really going ahead 5% a year on that Mm -hmm, test. mm -hmm, Just a handful, mm -hmm, maybe 20. mm -hmm. And we were going ahead 10, 12, and 14. Mm -hmm. And we never beat IBM. They always Mm -hmm. beat us, Mm -hmm. I must say that. Mm -hmm. But we used to go nip and tuck with Eastman Kodak. Mm-hmm. Sometimes they were ahead, sometimes we were ahead on the mm-hmm. cumulative performance. Mm-hmm. And that was the way we measured it. And all the while, working like the tickets, but having a good time. Everybody yeah. enjoyed it. You it, know, should every, it should be fun. Harold, you yeah. haven't yeah. accused me of being a workaholic yeah. yet. Most people do. No, wait a minute, I want to tell you that. Yes. Mm-hmm. To the people in that who are enjoying this, and mm-hmm. this is what I remember mm-hmm. I talked about the careers and things. Yeah, right. Well, all these people were growing. Mm-hmm and uh, getting careers and rewards, but more importantly, we must have had 150 people that we didn't have room for Mm -hmm. that learned enough about business Uh in a broad sense, sitting in those meetings, because they were intensive meetings, that they went on to be, Uh oh, I don't know, Uh chief executives, no, chief chief executives and uh, executive VPs of other companies. In fact, we had a whole Mm -hmm. alumni at one point. About 150 of these people, they used to get together on their own and have mm-hmm. a book with their phone numbers and sitting stuff in it. Sitting in on Harold Janine uh, seminars. Uh, uh, well, they, they call it Janine U. I didn't. Uh, Janine U. Right. I right, didn't. Yeah. I didn't uh, coin uh, that, yeah. but that's what happened. But, I, but it, I used to get a lot, and I still do get a lot of letters from these people, uh-huh. and they refer to that period as one of the more rewarding or the most rewarding, uh-huh. exciting periods of their life. And yeah. You know why, uh-huh. Harold? Because they were growing. Yeah, they were growing and they were learning. They're meeting a challenge and the same kind of challenge. You talk about the spirit of management. You talk. The, now you're into the real the, 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 the real spirits that are there, other than just uh, necessarily the external rewards and so forth. But there's a spirit of involvement that is fulfilling because it's the work that is in and of itself fulfilling. It's very similar, it would seem to me, to the kind of spirit that might motivate an artist in the yeah. painting or or or, or, a, or a composer in the midst of his composition. That's what he How, does. Uh, it's the work. Is what some reason artist. everybody mm-hmm. thinks of businessmen as highly materialistic, dollar-minded, if that's the word you can use, and not really having any feeling about anything. Is that maybe because too many of them are? No, I no, don't okay. know. Uh, just, uh, all yeah, I'm trying yeah, to say yeah. is uh, yeah. I think yeah. business can be yeah. an extremely uh, creative operation. Uh-huh. It can be extremely creative in what you do with and for other people. Uh-huh. 
And in a way, oh. it's a tremendously constructive thing. Yeah. If you want to look at it coldly, it's yeah. what keeps our society going. And, you know, if we, get a, if we get enough imports coming in on cars, then we don't have jobs here. Yeah. So yeah. it's pretty darn important to, yeah, to do the job to, right. And it's a concern to you because there are concerns in many quarters about, well, I don't know, the slackness, the flabbiness, the inefficiencies that are altogether seen by too many as being characteristic of some of American business. You know, yeah. structuring and so forth, and some of these questions might be really addressed and some learning done to how it might be done better. Harold, mm -hmm. uh, you remember I said a, a moment ago there was one problem of the way we worked, mm -hmm. all those meetings and mm -hmm. those facts and mm -hmm. all the things we had to work on. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you what the problem was. You had to do your own homework. Mm -hmm. right. Well, that was the second mm -hmm. problem. Right, right, right. But you had to do your own homework. Mm -hmm. If you were going to sit in those meetings with 150 people mm -hmm. and they're all watching you and you're talking with them and they're arguing with you, mm -hmm. believe me, you had to know what you were talking about. You couldn't do it by proxy. You mm -hmm. were there right on scene. You had to be self-motivated. So you had to do mm -hmm. your homework. Mm -hmm. And homework mm -hmm. is work. Mm -hmm. Maybe mm -hmm. not work you begrudge if you're mm -hmm. doing the job, but mm -hmm. it's work. Yeah. And I'm not sure everybody thing. wants to do that homework. And mm -hmm. that's why everybody says, you're a workaholic and all that. I don't know what they mean well, by that. Well, that might be just me, uh, again, the thing that would set you apart from... I suppose any champion, whether it's in golf or in painting or whatever, work. They work at it. They put an extra effort. They well, create. There is an element of something internally driving them to drive them to set these high standards. I think yeah, well, you get to back me. to well, something mm -hmm. we said in there before. We had a three-line sent uh, a three-sentence line out of uh, how to run the company. You mm -hmm. read a book from the beginning and you ran a business from the end and you figured out where you, where you wanted to be and you did everything necessary to reach it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's possible that That's there are companies. No, it's what I meant is it's possible to have a company mm -hmm. that either has a patent or a monopoly on something or a, a rare substance that material that they control. And maybe you can make all these kind of returns without that kind of work. Out of the inventor's lab. Really. Well, yeah, 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 right, yeah, yeah, right, usually yeah. it's the yeah. fourth guy with yeah. that invention yeah. that makes yeah. any money, not the yeah. first three. But yeah. still, yeah. what I want to really get around to yeah. is I'm just thinking of normal competitive business. Yeah. Uh -huh. And everybody's out there for the same reasons. They're uh -huh. all competing. You uh -huh. know, if you were trying to motivate a group of people and you had the Ford company, mm -hmm. you'd probably say, we got to beat Chevrolet. Mm -hmm. and if you were Chevrolet at the same time, you'd be saying, we got to beat Ford. Mm -hmm. But there's a spirit in this sort of thing, yeah. you see. Uh -huh. And everybody gets into it. And as I said way back there, they want careers, but more importantly, you got to be successful. Uh -huh. And uh -huh. to be successful, mm -hmm. uh, if you're not, there's nothing to share and there's no morale. Mm -hmm. But when you are successful, mm -hmm. all this thing picks up like a snowball and just grows. Do you think it could be a problem of management, not only at the top level, but maybe at some of the you know lower level of management and so forth, where people really, it is just a, it becomes just a job. I mean, it becomes a, a way of leading a life. It, it, there's not a sense of... Spirit. We mentioned earlier on the entrepreneur who might be just beginning mm -hmm. something, has a sense of adventure and a sense of real activity and involvement in the, th the thing. But then it just becomes, do you think it's a problem in terms well, of... Well, let me separate the, the two questions. Uh, management in the United States or the Western, or the United States particularly. You Harold, let, let me separate the two questions you mm -hmm. touch on. The real entrepreneur is a certain type of guy. I don't know if you can even fit him in a corporate That's operation. That's what I was going to say. The person of initiative, a person of individual initiative, and a guy that wants to really go, you know, strong. It usually, sometimes is the right. You know, they have problems within the yeah. the demands of the organization. That's itself. right. Yeah. I, I just want. Well, to, it's, it's yeah. a matter of degree. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. See, so don't forget. Or even somebody who's trying to really ascribe or to work hard is working harder well, than let the me group see wants can, to or something. See if know? I can draw a degree mm -hmm. on that. Mm -hmm. A real entrepreneur, as I think of him, is a fellow that wants to take tremendous risks. And he's willing to stick his neck out. He'll mortgage his house. He'll bother from, mm -hmm. borrow from his father-in-law. Mm -hmm. He'll do everything he had can to get yeah. going. Yeah. He's going to take the risks, and yeah. he expects to make in return for these mm -hmm. high risks mm -hmm. a tremendous reward. And that's the way yeah. he thinks. Yes, yeah. he does. He's he's yeah. a he's a, yeah, right. a real mm -hmm. I'm going to say risk player if that's mm -hmm. the word you mm -hmm. want to use. It could be it could be a person of vision. He has a vision. Oh it yeah, would, it he could be right. And, and don't forget, for every successful one you hear about, there's two or three that weren't. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. now, and he took that risk yeah. willingly, and he'll take it over again, or maybe he gets older, he won't. Mm -hmm. But now, people in corporations have traded some of that reward for less risk, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. this is true. A mm -hmm. corporate life. Uh, extends to you a feeling of continuity and mm -hmm. uh, if you do your job mm -hmm. that you're going to keep moving up and you'll mm -hmm. keep moving up by mm -hmm. merit and performance hopefully that's yeah, the way you run it projections about your life so, with certain so certain and, and, mm -hmm. so the, the truth of the matter is if you had a wonderful invention here tomorrow morning I mm -hmm. use that word it won't mm -hmm. be an invention it'll be mm -hmm. something you did yeah. huge mm -hmm. contracts or whatever mm -hmm. 
they can reward you in a certain manner over and above what you'd normally get, but you can't pay this guy the kind of rewards that that entrepreneur gets if he's successful. Mm -hmm. If you had to pay somebody a million dollars in the company, you'd have set all the pay scales and everybody's uh, equilibrium, mm -hmm. including the president's probably. Mm -hmm. So you just can't do that. Think so what you do is have... aside or lag? No, or no, no. What you have is mm -hmm. a kind of a feeling that if you're performing, it'll come out in the wash slowly, you'll move up faster, you'll get mm -hmm. bigger bonuses, and so on. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a different kind of, of, of reward, mm -hmm. and it, it's a different kind of person who mm -hmm. says, in effect, I'd rather share some of the reward in the sense of being secure, mm -hmm. and in turn, uh, I won't take these risks. Mm -hmm. I've got a family, I've got other things to do. So these are the compromises that people make. Mm -hmm. Now, that doesn't mean that you don't change at some time in your life. Listen, I mm -hmm. retired, what, seven years ago mm -hmm. now, and I'm out doing venture mm -hmm. capital mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. entrepreneurial mm -hmm. work. Mm -hmm. And it's fun, yeah. a lot of fun. It's more fun than playing golf. Oh, or, well, or, or not all of it. Part of the time. Yeah, I don't yeah. want to play oh. golf all the time. Right, right. But uh, but that that's the difference yeah. you're getting at now. Yeah. Within the corporation, mm -hmm. sure, you can do a lot of things to, to incentivize and get people to initiate ideas within a company. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, that's one of the important mm -hmm. things of no politics, leadership, mm -hmm. having careers, mm -hmm. letting people get into the act, mm -hmm. so to speak. Because mm -hmm. they're, they're bound to have, when you put them all together, they're bound to have more information than you are. Mm -hmm. and they're probably going to be closer mm -hmm. to a lot of these mm -hmm. things. So mm -hmm. what we did is, I go back mm -hmm. now, as you begin to get this total picture, mm -hmm. we sort of created an atmosphere where the management was down, and you, if you mm -hmm. think of a football team, Harold, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and you got the line, mm -hmm. and right behind him you got what you call the linebackers, mm -hmm. you remember? Yeah. And these guys are right the there. Well. Yeah, 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 right there, yeah. and when the play breaks through the line, they're right with it, too. Uh -huh. We brought the whole management down to the division oh, level. Right. Front line, I don't know what to call it. Yeah. Firing line management, right, if okay. you will. Okay. Right, okay, right. And that was the top of the company, uh -huh. as well as all the guys in between okay. down there, uh -huh. not this filtering business up to what I call the daisy chain. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah. that's what we did, and mm -hmm. everybody felt like they were part of it. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. basically, we had, like, uh, 250, 150 over there, 300, and say half, 50 of them maybe overlap. Mm -hmm. So we probably had 250 executives for a week mm -hmm. in these meetings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, if they each influenced 10 people, that's a, a sort of span of control theory, mm -hmm. you had 2,500 people that were talking direct, and we rotated people, so we had more. Mm -hmm. So we were probably reaching 80, 90 percent of our total management group of roughly 4,000 people mm -hmm. almost once a month. Yeah, right. And they sat there, and they knew how you thought, mm -hmm. you know how they thought, mm -hmm. and there was a really pretty consistent thing. But I, way back... I wonder, if some of that could be, I wonder if some of that could be bridged in teleconferencing and so forth now, or different kinds of communications uh, and so forth. I mean, now that we have the television aspect, rather than the, the telephone The mechanics are there. Yeah, the mechanics are there. You don't yeah. have to have the meeting room. You yeah. can do it some other way. Yeah. But that isn't the ingredient. I mean, I just think of all those airlines. Uh, no, no, no. Yeah, the well, we bought a plane. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and you yeah, use the work on the yeah, plane. We had a we used, yeah, well, we used to move the whole management over there for a week and back yeah. a week and so on. And then we go to South America with them once in a while. But yeah. I'll tell you a, an interesting story on that. Yeah. When I started the company, uh, started with the company, in Europe, we had some competition. And I, well, let me put it differently. We had other American companies that were running companies over there that they owned. Yeah. We had RCA. Mm -hmm. We had General Electric. Mm -hmm. We had General Tell. We had American Standard, and you know, by the time five years had gone by, practically all of them were gone. Hmm? And why? Hmm? Because we got on a plane and went over there and sat with the management and heard their problems mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and answered accordingly. Because I found if you were on the end of a phone here from 2,000 miles away mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. somebody had a problem that needed an answer, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. believe me, the answer you gave them over the phone was probably going to be a lot colder, mm -hmm. a lot less understanding, mm -hmm. and a lot more negative mm -hmm. than you would give him. Mm -hmm. And when you were sitting there talking to him, he's telling you yeah. why and what he's trying yeah. to do. Marshall McLuhan would have said a telephone would be a hot medium. It extend one of our senses. As if you have teleconferencing, it begins yeah. to be where you, at least you get a little more of that reality. No, you're right. You, you know, can do that. Maybe they tell the But Harold, let's, ass let's assume you had the mechanics now and you yeah. don't need to travel and yeah. all that. Yeah. But the still the ingredient yeah, the, 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 the ingredient is the integrity uh -huh. of the operation coming right down from the top. Right, you're talking right. about facts, yeah. you're talking yeah. about merit, you're yeah. talking about no politics, yeah. you're talking about the goals that you yeah. all want to reach uh -huh. and anybody in between 
that is, remember the guy yeah. I said, you know, if you don't get out of that job, you're hurting yeah. my career. Yeah. It's your job to pick those guys out and get them out. All right, right, right. And well, then, then nobody's going to, by the way, nobody's yeah. going to come and tell you yeah. he isn't doing his job. Uh -huh. They expect you to pick, figure that out. Well, it's your responsibility as part of the management. And the management, that's in a certain it, that, sense. That, you hit the word. Yeah, right. That's the responsibility. The responsibility that, that you uh, owe those people. Right. You owe it to them. And then you also have management as a responsibility in an ultimate sense to the to the stockholders in a yeah. traditional sense in the sense of management right. and i wonder i wonder if um if if, if there's a, there's a movement generally seen in business circles or in business economic development of the american economy where more and more of the managers many often the managers uh, were not they'd be managing a company but they didn't have particular an ownership stake in the company there's a general movement lewis council esop financing and so forth to expand ownership among the people who make up an entity an esop or an employee stock ownership plan do you think generally that's a good tendency and that oh, that sure. helps to give a sure. sense of, of of involvement and participation and still give yeah, economic yeah, yeah. award or individual rewards? I just wonder generally if you comment on that. Yeah. Well, it is a good thing. Uh -huh. I, I think uh, basically I had some comments in the book about the board of directors. And yes, I, well, we wanted to talk yeah, about Yeah, I, I got a lot of flack mm -hmm. out of that. But but let me say, well, the role. Well, one thing you don't yeah. have to worry about a, about a director. He may be mm -hmm. wrong in, in hell, but uh, I'll mm -hmm. tell you one thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, his interest is going to be very intense if he owns much of that company, and his questions are going to be a lot different. Now, yeah. you've got to remember, I'm not trying to put uh, a yeah. matter of integrity or, yeah. or interest on the part of a director just because he owns or doesn't own stock. No, I understand. But yeah, I can understand. tell you for sure that yeah. if he owns 20 percent of the company, his yeah. interest will automatically be where it should well, be. Well, I, I was thinking actually, I was thinking of that, the, 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 the director, but I was thinking of the management team All right, itself, now let's move know. to the management. Yeah. The, the same thing is true with the management, yeah. except you've got to be careful, in yeah. my opinion. This yeah. is a personal Fine. opinion Fine. now. Yeah. To keep the management's interest in that of the stockholders parallel. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. in, in the early days, we had stock options. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. if you wanted to exercise them, you bought the stock and you had to hold it for a minimum, I think it was three years. Mm -hmm. So you became a stockholder, mm -hmm. maybe even a more handicapped stockholder than the irregular ones, mm -hmm. who could sell whatever they wanted to if they'd held it for whatever it was a year. Mm -hmm. Now we've moved into an area where we have something called SARs, uh, mm -hmm. stock appreciation rights they're called mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, you don't have to buy the stock mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, you can uh, wait and sell uh, the right it's sort of like a call on the stock mm -hmm. well your stockholder has to invest his money mm -hmm, in mm -hmm. the SAR the management does not have to invest its money and that mm -hmm. was done to make it easier for mm -hmm. the management to hold mm -hmm. larger amounts of stock and mm -hmm. create an incentive it's good mm -hmm. And I and I as, like everything. There's mm -hmm. nothing perfect, mm -hmm. but you have separated the long-term interest of the stockholder from the long-term interest of the management mm -hmm. at that point mm -hmm. because he may have say ten years before he's going to retire. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he can uh, honestly figure. I don't care what happens in between as long as I get the stock up down there. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. maybe this has an effect on whether he wants to pay dividends or what he wants to do. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, I can assure you that if he's borrowed the money to buy that stock mm -hmm. and he needs some interest or dividends mm -hmm. to pay the interest, mm -hmm. he's going to be more interested right. in the dividend just as the stockholder is. Right, right, and right. so it's just a small point. Uh -huh. hey, there's pluses and mm -hmm. minuses mm -hmm. on most of these things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was just wondering in broad general terms about not only uh, the, the general question of if we, if, we, if we look at our economy and it's increasingly technology, which is being able to be in a certain sense responsible for production in a ratio with all of human input or labor's input, I mean from management right on through, if the technology base it's grown is uh, in our economy is relatively narrowly held, I mean um, among the general citizenry, even if we might be investigating methods for increasing ownership of technology, maybe even as a instrument of income distribution in a future pattern, if you can understand you what know, I'm saying. This, we, you know, we, I mean, the technology is re responsible for so much of the creation of the wealth, and it's very narrowly held, the ownership of that in the yeah, overall yeah, economy. Do you remember the original yeah. uh, uh, satellite uh, distribution of the stock when it was invented? The mm -hmm. government saw to it mm -hmm. that a uh, certain amount of it was uh, sold to the public and uh, when they first put the satellites up. Well, so, oh, the, con the con sa Satellite Corporation. Yeah, ComSat. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah ComSat. Right, yeah, That's right, right. right. I forgot the exact yeah, thing. Right, yeah. Well, that was a concept like you're speaking of, uh -huh. where the government wanted the people in general to share in the technical advances which had largely been developed out of the military. Uh-huh, they have, yeah. Uh, and they did at that time, so uh -huh. they wanted it shared with the public. That's the sort of thing you're talking about in yeah. a broad sense. Yeah. Now, uh, the, uh, you might say the ESOPs and stuff are uh -huh. basically an approach to having 
the workers, or workers, the people in the company is a better word, well, yeah, uh, own, the case own, own more and more stake in the company. Uh-huh. Or you could, have, you could have facilities corporations where the ownership uh, group might be able to move into people that are in traditional transfer payment groups and so forth. It's an alternative way of distributing income. I, I hadn't got no, that, I no, got well, that I mean, far. Just a thought I had. <laughs> the idea of a capitalist society have a private property holding as a way of distributing income rather than labor. Do you think that we have a problem in terms of the labor displacement of advanced uh, yeah. robotics and yeah. advanced yeah. artificial yeah, no, intelligence? No, no question. And if we ought to build an alternate way to distribute income than just labor that so many well, people have to depend uh, on? Well, you, you know, I'm a great believer in productivity yes, and not uh, much of a believer in, in, in sort of having people be paid to not use right. their best efforts. Right, 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 right. And by efforts, I, you know, you got to remember, I grew up in the Depression. and. Yes, uh, People didn't eat if you didn't work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and you did. You worked hard, right? Yeah. I went wanted, to night school. Let me simply, I wanted to eat. Yeah. yeah, right, yeah. yeah. Uh, a little simply put, but there's a lot of truth in yeah, that. Right. Now, I think what we have to do is, is qualified people to mm-hmm. do different kinds of work as mm-hmm. other kinds of work diminish. Mm-hmm. You know, you only have to today go out around the outskirts of middle America. You go up through areas like, uh, oh, Wisconsin, mm-hmm. uh I'm just trying to think of the towns, Milwaukee, yeah. uh, Racine, yeah. Pipeline. You see, yeah. but it's, it's duplicated in Detroit, it's yeah. duplicated in South Bend, it's su- duplicated all over. Mm-hmm. And you see these huge old buildings uh, that probably never open again. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Acres mm-hmm. of these things. Mm-hmm. And that's the smoke stack industry you're mm-hmm. hearing about. You yeah. go to the steel industries. Mm-hmm. I was in the steel business for several yeah, years. Sure. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you, it, you know, it, it makes you think. Mm-hmm. Because it says that somehow or other, We've either lost our market because we're not competitive to mm-hmm. people overseas, mm-hmm. or something has changed in the requirements for those markets. Mm-hmm. And uh, either one of these things mean that we have to have an, an answer for it mm-hmm. if you're mm-hmm. going to keep people employed. Yeah, Mr. Nesbitt would say we're moving into sunrise industries and sunset industries, and some of the well, industrial activity would be taking place in the developing countries and that kind well, of thing—a broad uh, reading of the. How the, the mm. people love concepts yes, like this because they're nice yeah, packages, yeah. but uh, truthfully, yeah. uh, people abroad have learned what an assembly line is. Yeah. It's no longer a, a, a unique accomplishment in Detroit as it might have been 60, 80 years ago. Uh-huh. And uh, they work hard, yeah. and it may sound a little odd, but the, their standard of livings are as lower than ours. They don't yeah. all go to work in an eight cylinder car. Yeah. They may well go on a bicycle, yeah, right? And uh, their requirements aren't as high, and mm-hmm. naturally, uh, they work harder because yeah. they're they're one generation almost removed from we might when mm-hmm. we might have worked that hard, or mm-hmm. two generations. Mm-hmm. So if we want to compete with them mm-hmm. and maintain the standard of living we have. Mm-hmm. We've got to work a little smarter, harder, mm-hmm. as people say, and that's mm-hmm. really what we got to do. Yeah, we are. Are you concerned? I wonder. Are you generally yeah, well, optimistic concerning well, the... Well, let me just touch the, on one thing, yes, uh, Harold. One of the reasons I like to write that book is I have a real feeling. I spent yeah. my life in business, yeah. and I believe in business. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I have a feeling we can do so much better. Better we, than we are. That's exactly right. Collectively. Maybe, and let me be honest, better than I did. Mm-hmm. Better than you. Yes, well, absolutely. No, that isn't mm-hmm. the, no, no, that isn't the question. Mm-hmm. And a lot of it, it gets back to this whole thing I'm talking about mm-hmm. where you go into a company, company after company, and the thing is so structured that everybody is well-intending, but mm-hmm. they just aren't using or getting their maximum input into the picture. Yeah, they don't and, and no, it's not that care easy. that much or something. Well, or maybe they do yeah, or yeah. they'd like to or yeah. whatever, but it's somehow you've got you know. to yeah. free this thing up. Yeah, really. and That's what maybe in a rudimentary way I'm trying to get at. And mm. I go back to the way we ran the company. Remember all those meetings yeah, and those right, things? Right, right, right. Well, that was a different approach. Yeah. Was that a was different. a very different approach. But the key thing is it worked. Now, yeah. maybe there are better ways. Uh-huh, but uh-huh. what I'm trying to say is the way that we are using is our standard model for uh-huh. industry in general uh-huh. isn't that good. Uh-huh. Yeah. People have to be able to have a sense of, you use the term very, very well in the book, if I may say so, to perform, uh, to measure up the performance. Standard. Well, and you have to have a belief that yeah. performance is performance, yeah. not making the guy above you happy because you told him what you, he wanted to hear. Uh-huh. And uh-huh. he shouldn't be in a position that he wants to hear anything but the facts, dismal as they may be be. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. it's your job, if he is that kind of a guy, you don't want him in there. Yeah, right. And they expect you to get him out. <coughs> no <coughs> politics is the word. Now, if mm-hmm. you do that, <coughs> everybody mm-hmm. kind of expands. Yeah, right. You know, it, do you think it is, a, if, if somebody's in a position of great responsibility for a multi-corporate structure, yeah. such as you have a conglomerate, such as that, 
that you that you tend to business like uh, of the business, or do you think it is appropriate to take a broader view of the world economic questions? Maybe participate in conferences, to make statements, or help take uh, you know a view of uh, a systems understanding of where that business you're the head of it fits in in terms of broader social, political, economic responsibilities of how we would define leadership, uh, or is it better to stick to? Well, let, let me, wonder, do you understand the, well, yeah, I understand it's a problem your question. Area, well, let, me, let me give you a little example out of my own experience. I Please. remember when I was in the steel mill, we, we, I got involved in something called operations research because mm -hmm. that was the current phase. Mm -hmm. And this was sort of where you, you figured out how to really add it up to step back from the trees and look at the forest. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I remember we hired a, a very fine uh, a consulting group to come in and help us with our our tube mills down there as to where it would go. Mm -hmm. And I was uh, kind of amused. They started in by almost finding out what the weather was mm -hmm. and what the climate was, and they were going to solve all of the world in order to come to that solution. Yeah. You know, that doesn't work. Yeah. Yeah. So let me reverse this. Mm -hmm. What we do and what we did, people say, well, you didn't do any long-range planning. Yeah, well, all right. Yeah. I, I believe in long-range yeah, planning. Right, cool. Let me say we went 58 quarters or 10%. That's pretty long-range planning. It's 14 yeah, and a half years, uh -huh. so something was long-range. Mm -hmm. But I don't believe in sitting down in a vacuum mm -hmm. and theoretically conceiving long-range plans and mm -hmm. then going carrying them out, because I'm not sure that they even fit the realities when you get there. Uh -huh. I tell you, you, you can hardly stumble over something or find a problem or an opportunity without sitting down and almost immediately sit standing up, projecting where it might take you. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And so somebody comes in with an idea and says, gee, we got this one here, and you say, gosh, that opens up a whole new market. Yes. It doesn't yes. take much brain power to go on from there and say, okay, how big is the market? What do we need to do it? Does mm -hmm. it pay? Mm -hmm. Do we need a new plant? Mm -hmm. And so on and so forth. But That's long-range planning. Yeah, but you don't want to study that to death. You want to get out with doing it. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah but, but the yeah, first yeah, point yeah, is yeah. you started with something real. Yeah, that's right. Then mm -hmm. you look around and see who else is doing it. Uh -huh, uh -huh. But to sit down and just say, you know, we really ought to move out of the smokestack industries into the high-tech fields, and uh -huh. 20 other guys and 20 other companies are making the same important decision, uh -huh. and all of a sudden you got 20 guys going into the high-tech field uh -huh. and getting out of the smokestack industry. I think at mm -hmm. that point I'd go around and buy the smokestack industry, <laughs> I'd do better. <laughs> yeah, but at that point then you're trying to get some sort of a realistic business goal. You had well, so many quarters of continuing growth and so forth yeah. within a company that kept taking on new divisions and kept acquisition. You had to make a decision on what acquisitions you were going to make out of the possibility. Well, you had to make decisions uh, on what yes, things are did. likely to be trending to which is going to bring those good earnings. And so forth. Uh, how you made you yeah. made different kinds of decisions. I've mm -hmm. said this frequently. Mm -hmm. What we bought was what was available. Uh -huh. What was important is what we didn't buy. Uh -huh. <laughs> really? Yeah, really. Yeah. Well, yeah. what yeah. I meant is, yeah. sure, you made a decision, I'll buy it. You made a decision, I won't buy it. Uh -huh. And we turned down more than we ever bought. We bought a lot. Uh -huh. But uh, what did you buy them yeah, from? And, and what did, well, you had certain did, did, you see, did you see synergies between those in terms of the performance? Sometimes, but uh, synergies is an no. over, yeah. overrated uh, kind of an approach. Right. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right. Well, okay. I, think, yeah. I think basically what mm. you did, well, mm. the synergy we had was management approach. All right, yeah. And then yeah. we applied that to all these businesses. Don't yeah. forget, we bought it. Hotels, everything, cosmetics, telephones, communications. Yeah, auto was there parental. a logic between the various things yeah. that you bought and so forth? And a very right. simple logic. They made money. All right, right. That was it. Then that was the basic. <laughs> they question. made money, yeah. and they had had ability to be grown. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Now, when I say ability to be grown, they had they had products and they had uh, customers who bought their products. Uh, Remember, when you buy a company, you buy a great bargain if it's any good at all. Yeah. You've written off all the mistakes that a new company will make. Uh -huh. They've made them all and written them off. Uh -huh. uh, you've, you've written off all the research they've done, all the development, all the advertising, all the company picnics, all the things they've ever yeah. done, uh -huh. all been written off. All you pay for is the assets on the balance sheet. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And so you're buying a really good bargain if they have a good product, mm -hmm. they have some customers, mm -hmm. and then we felt that with our approach we could improve that. Mm -hmm. We might take our technical people and, and, and improve the products, mm -hmm. make new ones, mm -hmm. move, the, move their products into different fields, mm -hmm. that was marketing. Yeah. These are all things you brought to bear on a nucleus that was already operating and, and somewhat proven. Mm -hmm. But you might be able to take basically the approach to managing and apply that to a great number of different kinds yes. of activities and have it work. It was the basic idea of the managing of this organization well, that was called for. Uh, it, how you see me, yourself as like outside managing. I mean, you know, you're acquiring a new company, you would be just like almost coming from a vision from outside of it the way it had been done, make it run better and make it 
Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. How the, let me, the, the let me sum management. up what we did, and mm -hmm. then you see this better. People talk about our sales improvement, our earnings improvement. Let me mm -hmm. give you the full dimension of what we did. Please. We bought about 250 companies, finally, something of that order. Mm -hmm. We paid about $6 billion for them. They're probably worth double that $12 billion today. Mm -hmm. But most important, we didn't have a lot of money. Mm -hmm. We bought practically all of those companies, with a, a very small exception, with paper. Our, the our, our stock. Our, no, 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 we no. put our equity stock uh -huh. out. So, oh, 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 I see. So, oh. so we huh? bought the companies with our promises, basically, in the form of our stock. Mm -hmm. Then we turned around and made that stock good. Okay. Right. And that was what the management did. Uh -huh. And then we brought them all into a, a group with a single common goal, much as we've done, uh -huh. and that all comes out in the earnings. But I want to tell you, that's a lot different than taking a company and just growing its earnings. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. We had to assemble it, buy it on uh -huh. IOUs, and yeah. make the IOUs yeah. good. Yeah. So yeah. we had a kind of a triple problem yeah. there. Now, yeah. that's what we did, yeah. and why I say uh, what we did in the talk about in the book, the yeah, right. way of operating, yeah. managing, uh -huh really works because uh -huh, uh -huh. uh, darn few companies have had to do all of that you can see you know i was talking about eastman kodak their yeah. earnings were going up but uh -huh. they had a huge base to work for yeah, that's true right yeah right and yeah. a great product yeah right yeah we right. had to assemble this whole thing buy it on paper and uh -huh. pay for it out of our earnings and make this thing good and, and that's growing, what we did and and growing as a conglomerate that's with correct. a great number of different right. interests it kind now, of makes uh, it interesting because well, what, are the, what are the things i read today is kind of amusic i don't like to say yes no, well, I believe in diversification. Yes, right. Yeah. Uh, you know, as a matter of fact, uh, all the insurance yeah. policies that are written are based on spreading risk. Uh -huh. You uh -huh. don't put all your money in one uh, one stock. Some uh -huh. fellow was giving me a hard time on diversification. Uh -huh. I was talking to him recently. I said, "Did you marry the first girl you met?" And he said, "No." So what I try to get at is, people don't uh, take all the risks without looking in and sorting things out a little bit. Yeah. And uh -huh. so uh, basically I think you're saying diversification is a proper way to operate. Uh -huh. Now there's a theory that seems to be around now that says uh, if it's a little bit complicated it can't be managed uh -huh. Uh -huh. and therefore you should sell it and get rid of it and you know come down to just one line. Uh -huh. Well of course that's what made the steel companies and that's what made the the oil companies and they've got their problems mm -hmm, today. Mm -hmm. I see in the paper this morning Caterpillar Tractor is selling off some stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, they stayed in their line as mm -hmm. did Deary and mm -hmm. uh, Alice mm -hmm. Chalmers and a few mm -hmm. other people. Mm -hmm. And so I, I don't think that diversification automatically is wrong. Mm -hmm. I think you've got to manage it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And this was one way you could manage it. Yeah, it would be a good thing to bring good management to whatever kind of business activity that you want to engage and in. And the basic lessons of good management are things that we ought to understand perhaps better than we do even coming out of our business school. Well, so Harold, let's say you can manage yeah. them, uh -huh. and then you've got some divisions or some areas of industry that are moving forward. Uh -huh. You put your money and your resources and your attention on those to push them. Uh -huh. Grow uh -huh. faster than you otherwise would. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Some areas may be in a temporary decline, uh -huh. cyclical or otherwise, uh -huh. so you hold the line. Uh -huh. But at least you got some options. Yeah, right, right. Now, when you're in the steel business, uh -huh. and it was going up, it uh -huh. all went up. When uh -huh. it was going down, it all went down. There was nothing you could do about it. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. That's the difference. No uh -huh. options. Yeah. The venture activity, if I may, we only got a couple of minutes left. Really sure, enjoy it. This is this is a this is a management lesson, or of course. But uh, the the entrepreneurial activity that you're involved in, venture capital, is enjoying yourself now at the moment. Yeah, very much. Yeah, maybe. And uh, basically, these are uh, going companies mm -hmm. which uh, could use a little bit more. Uh, excitement and stimulation, we'll say, and you mm. you think they've got the values, just like we did in the in the company. Mm. Remember, I said we bought mm. 250 companies, mm. uh, six billion dollars by pledging our paper, mm. making it good. Same thing on a small scale. Smaller scale. So right. you find a good company that people want to sell, or they're getting older and want to mm. retire, or whatever. Mm -hmm. You buy it, you borrow the money on mm. the company, raise a little bit, put it together. Mm. Go in and make the company run. Starting to run into some of the people involved with information technologies, artificial intelligence, uh, robotics, and some of these kind of things that Mr. Nesbeth and others would call the information technologies that are supposedly the path to the future and that kind well, of thing. Well, uh, you see, this is where you come back to the point I was making before. Yes, if you want to be in the technical field, or what yeah. they call high tech, yeah. whatever that is exactly, 
you got to stay right up in the on the edge of the curl of the wave. Mm-hmm. If you ever let it come down, you're mm-hmm. dead. Mm-hmm. If you fall behind, you're dead. Mm-hmm. And when you're dead in that field, you got a bunch of soldering irons mm-hmm. left and mm-hmm. nothing else. Well, well, all right, right, yeah. <laughs> so I had one successful company in the computer field, but huh? I could also tell you that same company went up to about thirty dollars a share and back down to about seven. Uh-huh, see? Uh-huh. But part of that is the markets, yeah. not necessarily, but. That's the nature of that, that field. Yeah, but it makes it kind of interesting to try and track and understand what's going yeah, on. Yeah, if you get out on the those. top, it's, it's interesting. Yeah. But on the other hand, yeah. you get some of these nice solid industries. Yeah. Where they, they can be service yeah. industries. Right. And they keep growing, 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 and the technology isn't going to change that rapidly on uh-huh. you. Uh-huh. Uh, nothing is going to make it go up too fast or drop too fast. Right, right. You've got a chance to get time to do the things you can do. Yeah, So right. all I'm saying is, sure, there are very high returns in high tech, but there are also high risks. No. Uh-huh, right, there are. And, and uh, again, back to that entrepreneurial environment, as it were. Well, uh, even more than that, uh, mm-hmm. the sparks that create new things with small groups, mm-hmm. uh, by the time they get to be a large group, uh, they need a lot of capital. They're running against uh, mm-hmm. very major entrenched people with big R&D budgets and stuff. They could use some help at that point. Though, yes, they can. And, and uh, yeah. I think I have a mm-hmm. section in the book there where mm-hmm. I talk about how many millions, hundreds of millions of dollars we probably saved by not getting into computers mm-hmm. on a broad basis, but mm-hmm. only on the basis where they fitted in with our products. Uh-huh. And uh, I can look around and see the examples. I could rack up a couple of billion dollars that mm-hmm. other companies lost right, okay. in the same period. Exciting time. Oh, yeah, exciting but, time we live in but now. It, but it's, it's a lesson, too. Don't yeah. get overwhelmed by new technology. Yeah. That's a tough game, too. Yeah, that's a tough game, just as they always are. They all have oh, to be sure. brought in, and what's going to be needed in any of these business enterprises is going to be basic premises of good management, and a great deal of the ideas of what makes up for good management really has to do with a, a sense of integrity for leading a good, uh, responsible life that can move one beyond the mediocre. And if I may say so, Mr. Janine, Harold Janine, who's been our guest, has been someone who's set an example for many of us in that regard. I want to thank you very, very much for that. Well, I've enjoyed it very much. And I certainly want to thank you for participating here in the series. It's been a great pleasure talking with you, and it's been a pleasure with you. I'll remind you in the audience for you to have the perceptions of Harold Janine, then, uh, uh, the succinct and relevant perceptions of Harold Janine. And again, he's uh, writing particularly about the book that's finally come to fruition, uh, Managing, that he wrote with Alvin Moscow, highly recommended. Happy to uh, recommend that to you, and thank you very, very much for viewing. We invite you to tune in again um, next week. We'll be coming back next uh, next week, but that's it for this particular segment. We'll see you next week, and once again, Mr. Uh, Janine, thank you very, very much indeed for everything. Thank you very much, Harold.